my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. The men of Israel and Judah surged forward with a shout. They surged forward with a with a shout. I thought about in getting ready for today how appropriate that this this series should come to an end on Super Bowl Sunday. Sunday that the entire country stops and pays attention. Even if you don't really care nothing about football, it's difficult to to ignore that this is this is one of the biggest Sundays, uh, one of the biggest days in our in our country every year because even folks that don't care nothing about the football game, they they care something about the food that's being prepared for the game. And then if you don't care nothing about the, foot, about the food or the game, then there are always those entertaining commercials that cause us to stop and laugh and, and reflect on tomorrow morning when they'll decide who had the best ads and who were the winners of the ads, which all suck us in to buy more products that we really don't need. But the winner of Super Bowls, the winner of uh, 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 champions, they're, they're crowned, they're remembered in the annals of history. Great performances are, 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 are made in, in these games and video clips from years to come will show the exploits and the deeds of those who went above and beyond to become champions in this game. Just as importantly as the Super Bowl is, then there are those of us who nobody else will see what's going on in our lives. It's not played out in front of millions of people, but yet, just like the two teams that are on the field, who have each have an opponent, we have an opponent or opponents that we are dealing with in our life every day. And whereas it might not seem as though anybody's really going to know or it's going to make a difference what happens in the battles that go on in our life. I want to let you know that, that whereas it might not be broadcast on the worldwide stage, that the opponent that is in front of you or the opponent that are in front of you, that, that what happens between you and your opponent, it has an, an eternal consequence that is very important. And it's, it's important that, that on this Sunday, as the Super Bowl is about to be staged, that as you deal with those battles in your own life, that, that you begin to see yourself already as victorious and on the winning side. See, nobody who goes into the game, it's not like, it's not like Seahawks are in the game saying, well, you know, we might win. Or we might lose. It's not like the Broncos are saying, well, we might win. We might lose. Each team goes in with the attitude that I'm going to win the game. See, that's an important side note as we talk about surging forward to begin with. Because you see here in 1 Samuel 17, just before we get to that which I read today, in the 47th verse, it says, All those who gather here will know that it is not by the sword of the spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. See, simply, if I'm lining up on the Lord's side, then then that moves me to that moves me to the first thing that I want to talk about today. See, if, if I know that I'm on the Lord's side, I, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody that knows that they're on the Lord's side. See, when you know that you're on the Lord's side, then then whatever that Goliath is that is in front of you will not cause you to panic. It will not cause you to be in fear. It won't cause you to stand still. It won't cause you to have a defeat. 
defeated spirit. Yeah. Yeah. See, nobody on the Denver sideline is believing that we ain't going to win. Nobody on the Seattle sideline is believing that we're not going to win. Because they believe that they're on the winning team. And if you believe that you're on the winning team, then you, but, but when you're on God's team, then you not only believe that you're on the winning team, but you know it. That's right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. See, then I, I know that I'm on the winning, winning team. And sometimes, you know, you can ask first lady, some, sometimes I, you know, I, I, I just, you know, anybody ever, ever just have one of those mornings? Anybody ever just, you yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You just have one of them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You have one of them morning. Oh, yeah. Anybody have one of them morning? Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. just one of them morning. Just one of them morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, and I was having one of those mornings to start. And I'm finding, I'm finding, I'm finding that the further along I move in life, the more I have those mornings. And part of it was is that, that, you know, I, I, I told Dick and Alex Jones yesterday, I went ahead and put out on Facebook, I, you know, when I did the half marathon last year, I liked one of the t-shirts that I saw, which said, I only run half marathons because I'm half crazy. Well, I went ahead and put on Facebook, I plan on running the whole thing this year. I'm making a commitment. I'm going to. I'm planning to do the whole thing. So to do that, I've been trying to keep myself in shape. And since it was 35 degrees the other day, then I decided to go outside and do a three-mile run. But a three-mile run where everybody hasn't shoveled their sidewalk is more like a five or six-mile run. See, if you folks know where I'm going with this, you see. See, I was wondering what was wrong with me yesterday. But by this morning, I know what was wrong with me. Some of my muscles were still saying, we didn't ask you to go out and run in the snow. And so I was having one of those mornings, almost to the point I told the ministers that they need to be ready. Because even when I was standing down at the communion table, I was about ready to just look at one of them and say, well, somebody needs to come on up here because, because my body is trying to catch up with my mind and my mind is trying to catch up with my body. But thank God for God's spirit speaking to my spirit. So when you know that you're on the Lord's side, then, then this is the first thing that you do. To surge forward, look at what it says in verse 48. It says that, that as the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line. So the first thing I want to talk about is run quickly. Run quickly, run quickly. What do I mean run quickly? Well, what most of us do when we're faced with life challenges is we do as as the Israelites did is is if we we stay where we are or even worse than that we start backing up. Now it's one thing to back up as we talked about last week so that you can reflect on on God's principles and what God is speaking into your life. It's another thing to back up as in move away, as to try to get as far away from this thing as possible, or to decide that I'm just going to I'm going to stick my head in the sand and try to 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 prayerfully when I wake up. Then this Goliath that is in front of me, this this situation that's in front of me, if you you, you, you know it's tax time. If you got a tax situation, you can't just run from the tax situation. Yeah, you got a witness here. You got to deal with the Goliath. Yes, sir. That's in front of you. Whatever your Goliath is. Now, now you can put your head in the sand. 
You can back away from it. You can stand still. You can be paralyzed. But if I do any of those things, then it's not going to be. It's not going to be resolved. And if anything, it's going to get worse. So why should I run quickly? I should run quickly because I'm a person of faith. As a person of faith, I believe that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of that which is not seen. I believe that God says that anybody that comes to him must believe that he exists and that they operate in faith and that God is a rewarder of those that are seeking after him. And so see, if I am on God's side, then there's no need for me to run away. There's no need for me to bury my head in the sand because my enemy is looking to pursue me, to hunt me down, and to try to defeat me because he thinks that he or it is just going to simply be able to dominate and to have rule over me. Look at what the verse says. As the Philistine moved closer to attack. Yeah, yeah, See, whatever that enemy is, it ain't, it ain't just going to disappear. Amen. The tax problem is going to get close. The situation is going to... Most people have got some tax issues. Everybody got it. <laughs> and that's all right if you got tax issues. Because all of us have made mistakes somewhere along the line. But then, but see, let me just ask. See, attack the tax issue. Let's slow down. Attack the tax issue believing that I got God's faith. See, because most of those kinds of mistakes were made when I was not operating under God's will. If anybody be in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation. Old things have passed away. The old all things become new. It does not mean that we don't have to deal with the sins of our past. But it does mean that I believe that now I am anointed by God. I believe that I have God's favor in my life. I believe that God is acting on my behalf. God, it don't even make... I, 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 I understand what I need to do and what I got to do. But let me see the hand of somebody else. Look, look let's just look. Let me see what, let me see in particular in the instance of a tax situation or a bill situation where you didn't think you were going to go work, be able to work it out, but God, God showed favor on oh, your behalf. Yes. Let me see those. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you see, the only way you are able to deal with that situation is, you know, now this ain't Bible, but one of the things my father simply taught me was this, you got to get on the phone and talk to somebody. But see, when you get on the phone and talk with somebody, I know when I have those situations, I get on the phone and I say, Lord, please bless me with favor. If you've got to go into an office and talk to somebody, then ask God, God, give me favor. Lord, bless me with somebody who's going to say, well, you know what should happen in this situation. But God, I don't, but I don't know why today, Mr. Moore, I don't know why, Miss Fondy, I don't know why, Mr. Reed, yes, that on this day, I know what the book says, yes, but there are rare instances where we are able to do X, Y, Z. Oh, yes. 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 See, <laughs> run to it. Because here's the issue, if you don't run to it, it's going to keep chasing you. Now that ain't just with tax situations. It's with employment situations. Because if you don't chase after employment, then the effects of unemployment are going to keep chasing after you. If you don't chase after good health, yet, look, it hurts to get out in the snow and run three miles, but I'd rather get out in the snow and do the three miles than deal with the effects of not doing it. 
Because the more you run away from exercise and healthy eating, Come on. that's why we have the instances of diabetes and heart attack and all the things that we have in our community. You can run away from it all you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, somebody say amen. amen. The Word of God says, do not do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Right. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Yeah. So you got to decide that that instead of running away, backing off, deciding I'm not going to deal with it, I'm going to run to the battle line and I'm going to deal with what I need to deal with. Yeah. Why? Because I believe that See, see, I got to believe what I read first. Is that the Lord is on my side. It's not my battle, it's the Lord's battle. God says I'm on his team. God says I belong to him. God says I got favor. God says I got his anointing. God says I am his child. My Bible says that if God is for me, You need to run to the situation and get, nothing's going to get any better by just leaving it like it is. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things that stops most institutions, organizations, is when you even doing things the way you've been doing them, is backing up. Part of what we talked about in our meeting yesterday is, is part of what the ministers and deacons are working on is paradigm shift. It's change, it's movement, it's running forward. Not just to continue to do things. Because if you are doing things the way you've been doing them, as you know, I have many favorite movie lines, but one of my other favorites from the Shawshank Redemption is when Morgan Freeman's Red says to Tim Robbins and uh, uh, Andy Duchesne, Dufresne, is either you get busy living or you get busy dying. If you're not trying to live, you are one step closer to the grave. So the first thing is you got to decide that I'm going to run to the battle line. But i got to run to the battle line knowing that I am working on equipping myself. And everything here is, is really what... You know, one of the things they always tell you on your resume is that you ought to have, you ought to have action words. Amen. You need verbs that express action on your resume. So all of this is about action. You can't be a Christian that's not a person of action. Not if you want to defeat Goliath. And see, that there's a reason that we want to de defeat Goliath that we're going to get to at the end of this passage. So not only do I need to run quickly to the battle line, I want to run in the race believing that I'm going to get the prize. And then in the 25th verse, in, in 1 Corinthians 9, they says, because everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. So see, I have to be about training and preparing myself to be able to deal with the Goliaths that are going to show up in my life. As a matter of fact, you need to understand that, that if you are a child of God, then the enemy really has, he really has a mark on you. He really wants to take you out simply because... You are now proclaiming that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Yeah. So that means there's a bullseye on it. There, there's a high. That's why for many of us it hasn't gotten any easier. In Christ. It's not, it, it's, see, but when we do it God's way, it's because we're, 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 we're mixing metaphors. See, we can't, we can't try to live, live God's life in doing it the way that we used to do. That's where it becomes hard. But we go into strict competition. Now, here's what happens when we, we go into strict competition. 
is or strict training. As we go into strict training, then we find that we begin to tone up and prepare our spiritual muscle to be able to use the equipment that God has now given to us. See, because the equipment that I'm using right now isn't the equipment that I used to use. If I'm not going to use any new equipment to try to do what God has in front of me to be able to slay the giants that I'm dealing with, then why should I even, why should I even attempt it? Why should I even mess around with it? Why should, if, if I'm just going to come to church, if I'm just going to come to church but I'm not going to live for God, then what's the point? See, but when I decide to live for God, then that means that I am, I am given, I am given some equipment that I, that, 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 that I don't, I, I, I don't, I'm not used to. Now see, for me, I started off undergrad as an electrical engineering major. I, I finished my calculus, I finished four calculus classes, I finished differential equations. I didn't know what that stuff was. I, so it wasn't my strong point. But I finished. I worked one summer for Bell Laboratories doing fiber optics, 1982, when, when, when Bell Laboratories was still the leading research and development laboratory in the world. But, but why, am I, why am I sharing that with you? Because, you know, I was in the office before service, and I had this note on my desk that we changed, we changed Internet providers, and, I had the password for for the new new internet service, so put the password in my iPad and my iPad wasn't acting right. The first lady came and looked at it. She said, Well let me get Chris, but Chris was outside. I said, Never mind, I'll just try to figure it out somewhere. Sister Pauline tapped on my door and said, Well Pastor, you you uh you know, you said it's not working and Dana was in the office and she said, Well well, Pastor, I said, well, I can't get the internet. I said, I, 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 I put the password in. Y'all know how the little thing be spinning around, be spinning around. And David, David took my iPad and she tapped a couple buttons, and all of a sudden, I had internet. What am I saying? I started out as a person. I finished my undergraduate degree in economics, but I started out as an engineering major. I, I tell folk all the time, I am not technologically savvy at this point because I simply don't spend the time that I ought to spend with technology, understanding it, and being able to use it. All I'm saying is this. If you're a Christian and you're not trying to use the Word of God and understand how you can use the Word of God, then that means that your aim is going to be up. And, and the second thing I want to talk about here is that, that you need to not only run quickly, but you need to learn how to aim accurately. See, the Word of God is our blueprint for living. The, the Word of God will help us in every situation that the enemy puts in front of us. And, and here's the thing, is that the further you go along in life, then whether it's financial crisis, whether it's losing loved ones, whether it's dealing with kids, whether it's dealing with relationships, whatever it is, health issues, the further along you go in life, then there's some stuff that's just going to crop up that you're going to have to deal with. And if you are not equipped, then what's in front of you is going to be like the life. It's going to frighten you. It's going to scare you. It's going to make you want to put your head in the sand. It's going to make you want to give up. It's going to make you want to lose your mind. It's going to make you want to run away. It's going to make you say, what's the point in living? I try to do the best I can, and this is what I get in return. But you, you and I have to learn how to aim accurately. How did David learn how to aim accurately? Well, a couple things we've already talked about. It was his experience with God. That's why I ask you to celebrate. If you have had 
some victories in your life that you know and you're clear about at this point. The only reason I had those victories is because God was on my side. When I had to fight against the lion, I had to fight against the bear. I was up against circumstances, situations, people who blasphemed me, talked about me, fences, Rev. Hugh mentioned we're in Black History Month and the old spiritual saying, I've been puked, I've been scorned, been talked about, shows you born, I've been mistreated, misused, been treated like everything and anything. way I made it was first of all God was on my side but then along with God being on my side you know God God isn't looking to always just come and pick us up God is is looking to pick us up as we go along on the journey as we know how to rightly divide his word of truth when Joshua was ready to take over for Moses, he God understood that, look, this task for you is overwhelming. This task for you is too big. This task is like a Goliath in front of you. So to begin that first chapter of Joshua, the Word of God says simply, As I was with Moses, God will be with you. Many who've been in this congregation for years, you, we, we all love Deacon Palmer Reed. But what God has done for Palmer Reed, God will be with you. Anybody that you look up to spiritually and you say, wow, God really moves in their life. So as God has been with them, so God will be with you. Here's the only thing God said is that whenever Goliath shows up, I need you to be strong and courageous. There's got to be something in your spirit that says, God is on my side. And then he said, he'd never leave me or forsake me. Well, how is it that I get to be strong and courageous? Then it simply says this, keep the book of the law, keep the word of God with you. So that you meditate on it both day and night. Then you'll learn how to be prosperous and successful. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. Right. See, I'm just telling you what I'm learning in life. Things that I've heard my mother say, now I'm beginning to incorporate them in my own spiritual walk. Amen. I'm getting to the place where sometimes I don't know why. Some of you remember when you just used to put your head on the pillow. And you used to just go to sleep. Mm. But then as you go along in life for whatever reason, you find that you put your head on the pillow and you just don't go to sleep. Come on. Come on. In the same way that you used to just put your head on the pillow and go to sleep. But see, now I'm learning to do what my mama has done for years. Meditate on the word of the law both day and night. All right. All right. So when I'm laying there and I can't go to sleep, and I didn't turn on one side and turn on the other side, adjusted the covers and adjusted the pillow, and I just can't seem to fall asleep, then I just lay there and have a conversation with the Lord. All right. I begin to meditate on the word of the law both day and night. You begin to hold on to scripture. You begin to think about the Lord being your shepherd. Begin to think about the Lord being your life and your salvation. And then you say, who shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of who shall I be afraid? Then the wicked, even my enemies, they come up against me. Then they stumble. See, I think I need to stay right there. Because the psalmist says, See, what happened is that Goliath, David, I'm 
glory. David had learned to aim accurately. See, this wasn't, this wasn't the first time he had been in a fight. So David had learned to aim accurately. So Goliath is running towards him. Being like, let me, let me just get this over with. Be done with it. But David runs to him. Well, you know, first thing I believe that you'll start shocking your enemies if you start running towards them. Come on. Come on. That's right. That's right. Instead of running away from them. See, first of all, that means they got to come up with a different strategy. Because they're used to seeing you retreat. They're used to seeing you sit there and take it. They're used to you. Believe it. But when you start moving towards them, then the enemy got to deal with you different. You got to come up with a different strategy. But not only that, then he reaches into his bag and he takes out a stone and it says he swung it and he struck the Philistine on the forehead. Right. See, his aim is accurate. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. When my enemy, they came up against me, the psalmist said, they stumble and they fail. How is it that the enemies came up against the writer of the song and they stumbled and fell? Because back up. Right. See, David had become accurate with his sling and his stone. But what had he told you already? The battle is not mine. Uh -huh. All right. Now there, there have been studies done that show that, that, that in ancient times that, that those who used slingshots. And this isn't just a this ain't just a fable here. That a stone slung properly from a sling could travel hundreds of miles an hour. And those who are in the medical profession can tell you that, that if you hit the right temple, you hit the right artery, it don't matter how big you are. Because all of our, our anatomy is structured the same way. But David had become accurate with it, but he slung that stone in faith. See, so what am I saying? What I'm saying is this. God's going to do his part. Somebody need to hear me. God's going to do his part. But i got to do my part. See, David had to go and get the sling and the stone. He had to sling the stone. That was his part. you got to get the word of God. And when you get the word of God, then you aim it. And learn to aim it. Accurately. So whether it's health, whether it's relationship, whether it's employment, whether it's taxes, did you learn to take the word of God and aim it at your enemy? And believe. Because see, here's what God says. And I didn't look this up. I didn't look the particular verse up, but it's in the Psalms. is always going to honor his covenant. God is always going to honor his word. Right? Let me just see your hand if you believe that. You believe God's going to honor his word? Right? So, if I'm dealing with heaven, God's word says, 
3 John that even as your soul prospers, so I desire that you prosper in your health. That's God's word. Right. I don't know why disease comes by, but God says in his word that he desires that we prosper in our health. Right? In Exodus, he says this. He says to the Israelites as they are traveling along the way, he says, if you honor my word, my paraphrase, if you honor my word, he says, I will not bring on you or allow the same diseases that came on the Egyptians to be on you. That's God's word. So if I'm dealing with health, then I want to lift up to God this is what your word said. I didn't make this up. I picked up. God, this is your book. Right? When we started this thing out and I talked about why I submit to your husbands, that's what the word of God says. But then it comes back and says so that the brothers can't decide that I'm going and my wife needs to do her part but then no, I got to do my part too because it says that I'm called to love my wife as my own body as Christ loved the church now I can't do nothing about my wife that's what you might say but I can honor my end of the covenant and believe that God will take care of what God needs to take care of right? you can't do nothing about your husband but you can honor your covenant with God that aim that stone and believe that God that God's going to take care of his end you got to learn how to aim accurately. Then the final thing I just want to talk about before we get to the conclusion of this is that it says, So David triumphed over the Philistine with sling and, sto and, so and stone without a sword in his hand and struck down the Philistine and killed him. You know, for those of you who, who don't know it, then I would have you to go home and read 2 Corinthians 10 which simply says the weapons of our warfare that they are not carnal but they are they are mighty unto the Lord on the contrary we have divine power to demolish strongholds we demolish every argument every pretension see it says in in, in the 50th verse David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone without a sword in his hand he struck down the Philistine and killed he David didn't go fight with the weaponry that his adversary had. You can't defeat evil with evil. The word of God says overcome evil with good. It says go and, go and pour goodness onto the head of your enemy in Romans. Somebody mistreating you, then just keep keep loving them. Keep, keep being good to them. Mandela believed in a prison cell. That because he was kind to the folk that oppressed him. And eventually he won them over. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. So then look at this, verse 51. We're almost done. So David ran and stood over him. Now did you notice in the 50th verse, it says that David didn't have a sword. But guess what? In verse 51, he got a sword. See, now that your enemy has been defeated, what you didn't have, now you got it. Now I have, I possess what the enemy had. Then the last thing I want to talk about, you got to, and I said this when we talked about it on watch night, or end of the year service, you got to chop off heads. Right? Yeah. 
action words, action words. Run quickly, aim accurately, then you gotta chop off heads. What am I talking about chopping off heads? Well, some heads are those things that have come up against us that we didn't ask for. And when we chop those heads off, this to be able to help somebody else understand that you can defeat even those things that come up against you that you didn't ask for. I believe that's when we we hold up those things that we didn't ask for. We chop off the head to help somebody else understand you didn't ask for this, but you defeated it. Right? I remember going through divorce. I remember a time where I never thought that I'd be able to stand it. Right. Right. But now I can help somebody that goes through that journey. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've been through it. Yeah. Yeah. And a time where I thought I was going to lose my mind and my life was meaningless, had no purpose. I can say to somebody, it's, it's, it's a rough way to go. It ain't what you're playing, but guess what? You'll be able to survive. So when you go through illness, somebody in here lost a job that was a job that you just loved, that you just dreamed of, that you just thought that was it. You lost that job. But guess what? The Lord blessed you with something better. Now you chop, you chop that, and you can hold it up and help somebody know that, that look, I went through some rough times. I went through having nothing but beans and bread. But then here's the other reason you need to chop heads off. Sometimes we need to chop heads off because there's some stuff that, that the enemy did not, not so much that the enemy was just attacking us, but it's some stuff that we participated in. Yeah, sometimes the enemy is us. Come on, somebody. Sometimes we participate in destructive behavior. Sometimes we participate in behaviors that are not good for us. And so we need to be able to chop the head off, not for somebody else. But every now and then we need to be able to go back and look at behaviors that were not good for us. Behaviors that were not becoming to our walk with the Lord. And we need to be able to go back and look on the trophy shelf and see. The Lord allowed me to cut off fits of rage. The Lord allowed me to cut off lust. The Lord allowed me to cut off alcoholism. The Lord allowed me to cut off drug abuse. The Lord allowed me to chop it off. And it's not part of my walk anymore. It's not part of my talk anymore. It's not part of my being anymore. It's not part of my behavior anymore. That head has been chopped off. That Goliath has been defeated. Now there might be some other Goliaths that, that try to rise up in the land. But see, here's the good thing. Is that whether Goliath came at me or whether I participated in developing my Goliath. And look and see that I've already chopped the head off before. If I chop the head off before, I can chop the head off again. So now what's the importance of chopping heads off? What's the importance of running to the battle line? What's the importance of aiming accurately? What's the importance of chopping heads off? Well, let's look in this, this verse. And we'll be ready to go home. It says, because when the Philistines saw their hero was dead. Somebody could, could somebody, if somebody just feel it, just go on and run for me right now. Come on. Come on. See, because it said in the beginning that, that see, because, because David decided to run quickly towards Goliath. Then, you know, all of those little minions and all those little demons that, that were hanging out with Goliath. Yeah. Oh. Y'all know how to bully on the playground. He, he always got the folks standing behind him. And they acted like they really somebody. And, and that bully stood up in front of you and told you what he was going to do. And all his little friends, they egged him off. But see, once the bullet 
all of the Goliaths that God has slain in their life, we would be here for weeks. You know, some of those Goliaths have been slain when we wasn't living right. Some of those Goliaths have been slain when we wasn't trying. Some of those Goliaths have been slain when Jesus was the furthest thing from our mind. Come on, stand to your feet. Just, just think about where the Lord has brought you from. My heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my